Hi YouTube, Laura Marco with Laura Marco's Garage coming to you today with what we're doing with that 1988 Chevy pickup truck. Putting in this crate engine from GM. Why crate engine? Well, we could have one sent out and built, but with the cost of this crate engine, really at the end of the day, you're not going to get it built for this kind of money. It's all new parts, one piece seal, it's got full roller uh, cam set up, which the other engine does not have. Of course your rockers will still be standard rockers. This is uh, GM Performance out of the catalog. Right here, GM Performance catalog. This is a 2019 catalog on this page here. This is the SP350-357 base. Uh, part number, they say is a 19367080 in the uh, catalog here. On the crate itself, it came with this uh, particular number here, which is, um, 19420881. What's nice about a crate engine like this, you also get a warranty tag. Warranty tag is nice, it means, uh, you know, it actually comes with a warranty, uh, what is it, 100 and, I think it's 100,000 kilometers or five years, whatever comes first. That's kind of nice if, you know, if there is a problem with this engine, if you took it to a rebuilders, a lot of rebuilders won't back their product, so that's a nice thing with buying a crate engine. This engine in Canadian dollars is uh, 5100 $45. I did purchase this last year. 357 horsepower, 407 foot pounds of torque. Now, if you remember the 57 Chevy, if you go back and watch that video, I put a crate engine for that job. Yeah, he had the 383 and that had uh, 323 horsepower and 444 foot pounds of torque. So this one has a higher horsepower number, less torque. The other one was more like having a big block Chevy and a small block Chevy package. Specs on this engine. Uh, cast iron block, 4 inch bore, 3.48 on the stroke. It's a 4 bolt main block. The pistons are cast aluminum, so no hyper eutectics or forged or anything like that. It has a hydraulic roller cam, the, uh, which has a 0.473 intake and 0.473 exhaust with 215 uh, degree intake, 223 exhaust. So it's got the cast iron cylinder heads with 64 cc chambers with 194 intake and then 150 exhaust for the uh, valves. Compression ratio is 9.0 to 1. Rocker arms are the stamp steel type with a 1.5 to 1 ratio. They recommend that it has 32 degrees of total timing at 4,000 RPM. A maximum RPM recommended for this engine is 5,600 RPM. They recommend putting a dual plane manifold on this engine as well, which um, this one is getting a sniper fuel injection system. Usually you want an open plenum for those, uh, some of the uh, videos I've seen. But what was available to me and what I could get was basically this Edel Rock, which I'll go over. So that's the engine specifications that's going in this uh, the old Chevy truck here. So this engine basically um, is set up for, you know, you can drop it in a truck like that. Usually they have an oil cooler. It doesn't come with the oil filter adapter. I have to put that in there. It doesn't come with a damper. They probably expect you could use it off for the engine that you pull out of your truck or pick up a damper of your choice. The damper that I did pick up here is this Power Bond Harmonic uh, Balancer. Part number... PB1046ST. I did pick up a Mr. Gasket bolt, uh, so I have a new bolt to put it on. And then here's the damper here. I've got to paint the engine before I install it. So it's nice, it does have your degrees printed right into the uh, metal there off the paint, so it's like et laser etched in. So it's uh, really nice to be able to time it. I'll have to put a uh, timing marker on it because it doesn't come with a timing pointer. This is the Edelbrock Performer RPM intake right here. Um, this one's made in the USA. It doesn't have any markings on it that it was made somewhere else, uh, unlike that Holly intake I bought. Your uh, water uh, outlets here, you got different ports for sensors, senders, things like that. You can put a carburetor on this. This is uh, kind of special for this engine because it, with the Vortex cylinder heads you only have 8 bolts holding it down and they go straight in uh, unlike the other ones that go in at an angle. This is uh, designed to fit this engine. Just like that there. Fits pretty good. Fitment's nice. One of the things I want to point out on this engine, the special notice tag. Um, this special notice tag 
It's the same tag they've been using since 1973. Okay, so yeah, this engine may not be emission compliant for certain states um, and certain areas, so this is designed to be an off-road engine. But up here in Alberta, Canada, we can install this in the truck without any issues. But yeah, that you got to watch depending where you're from whether you can use an engine like this. Okay, yeah, so the another reason uh, we went with the small block Chevy, the truck's already set up for a small block Chevy. It already has some headers and some pieces on there. He was thinking about going with an LS engine, but the cost of doing the LS conversion with an oil pan and then new headers and all the different things to make it fit in that truck, um, other than the fuel injection, probably would have been about the same kind of money uh, or less. We decided to go this way and just put a... Uh, he'll get about the same horsepower and everything that you would unless you spend, you know, unless you're going to boost it. If you're going to build an engine with a lot of horsepower, yes, an LS is definitely the way to go. But for this application, this is a, this is a great deal. So the last thing to talk about, this engine does come with a dipstick. And it just sort of fits in the side here. Drops in. There's a place to bolt it to the block. Should clear the header, things like that. It is just a, a nice bright yellow dipstick. Uh, there are aftermarket dipsticks available, so we'll see what, what happens here. But anyway, this uh, that's what comes with the engine. And it does come with a bearing for the uh, crankshaft if you're running a manual transmission that this crate engine comes with. It also has a cover plate here for the uh, fuel pump. The block should be drilled if you wanted to run a mechanical pump on it. Okay, Holly Sniper. This is what's going to get topped off with here. This is the. Let's see what's inside the box. I haven't really been through this, so going through this together. So inside here, of course, with supply chain uh, demands and uh, you know or supply chain issues. This is what I could get in stock. It's got the gold finish, kind of like the way an old carburetor would look. Which I think looks good. I was trying to get a black one for him, but anyway, this is what I could get at the time. Simple hookups, everything's built in. Fuel injectors, I think all your metering, your throttle position sensor. This is your linkage, just like hookup for carburetor, throttle cable, everything should work. Got your butterflies there. So I'm, this is the first time I'm installing one of these. So let's see what that looks like on here. I think that will be kind of nice. I'm going to get some carb studs for that. I'm also going to paint this intake manifold either the same color as the engine or at least paint it so that it, it stays uh, aluminum color. I know this finish looks really nice now, but if you leave it in the, in the vehicle after about a year, all this white, will, this will just kind of turn funny. So we're going to paint that. The uh, engine is going to go uh, cast iron color instead of this black uh, we could go Chevy engine orange or red or something like that I want to keep it kind of elegant looking but not uh, not flashy so that's why we're going to go with this color here I did a, an, an engine in a hot rod in my truck and I really liked how it turned out with that so I kind of that's what we're going to go with box here so here you get your wiring harness it has a relay here I think uh, this plug goes right to the uh, throttle body basically up there and there's main power, key on power and whatever we'll find out when the instructions all that gets hooked up. The truck is already fuel injected, there's a fuel pump in the tank but I'm going to have to upgrade that, uh, that pump. Here's all the gaskets that we need to be able to put the air filter and the uh, throttle body basically right on top of that intake manifold there and some stickers. Instructions. And in the box here, hopefully nothing's damaged, looks a little squished. Um, got some more wiring here, some wire loom. Got a four wire or five wire. Let's see what this is. A uh, five looks like a five wire. So uh, true Y band oxygen sensor, uh, which it would have to be that way to be able to do uh, self learning, which it does have. You basically put in a basic tune specifications and as you drive this uh, should get better and better I'm not even sure what that is but it's part of it <laughs> you get a couple of clamps and a bung that if you don't have a way to weld in 
your oxygen sensor, you can use that. So that's kind of nice if you're just doing this on your driveway and you don't have a welder, you can still make it work. I will, however, weld the bung in because I have that kind of capability. You got a temperature sensor, which is important because that tells the fuel injection system what engine temperature you're at so it can uh, do your fuel trim. And then there's a little screen here. So I think that's what's in here. Yep. Uh, so you got a little handheld controller that will plug in and a little screen that you can see data, probably make some changes. And looks like got a memory card that you could probably put into a computer and do some stuff. Like I said, this is the first time that I've uh, installed one of these. So we'll learn about this together and see how it turns out. My biggest thing is I got to get the computer in the truck to interface like gauges and stuff like that to work on the dashboard and then have this system work. So that's one of the things I have to figure out. And I just love wiring, right? Like everybody. So the putting the engine in the truck will be the small job and then the wiring will be the big job. On the front of this engine, you have belts and accessories. I am going to change it up to this metal bracket here. Now this engine does come with uh, an aluminum bracket that goes on this side, an aluminum bracket that goes on this side. This side will hold your AC pump, you got your alternator power steering pump. I don't like the aluminum bracket, I think it's clunky looking. I went to the auto records and picked up this uh, metal bracket that's stamp steel. On this side here, this holds a pollution pump, not needed at all. I'm going to cut the bracket here, get rid of this part. The bracket will go from the, all on this side, the tensioner is part of this. The other one, because it doesn't have AC, there's a big idler wheel on this side. It's just a lot of uh, stuff on the front of the engine clutters it up. So I'm going to clean this up, paint it, install this bracket, and run it instead. Also, this has a thin belt. I'm going to upgrade the pulleys. This is just a sample. This is not a pulley fort, but it'll go to a wider belt. I'll change all the pulleys to the wide belt system and then put it on the front of the engine. So if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment as I love reading the comments. Also share the video if you like it and other people see it. Have yourself a great day, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.